In this video, I'm going to show you how to crush your AI automation agency's pitch deck so that you can dramatically increase your close rate, position yourself as the AI authority in the local market, and generate hundreds of thousands of dollars in revenue for your agency. The best part? I've already built a free white label AI agency presentation just for you. Click the link in the description, download the slides, and follow along as I show you how to deliver them with confidence. This deck is built around the Why Change framework, which I talked about a little bit in the Starting Your Own AI Automation Agency episode. It's a structured approach where we use the power of storytelling to convince potential clients they urgently need your services. Prospects don't want to be sold to. They don't want to see slides about how awesome you are and how much you're going to sell them, as it's a turnoff. They want to be educated. They want a compelling narrative. And we want to take this approach because stories are 22 times more memorable than facts or figures alone. So by the time you're done watching this video, you're going to become a master storyteller. You're going to learn how to introduce prospects to an unconsidered need, which in this case is AI and automation. You'll learn how to utilize loss aversion. I'll show you how to highlight the missed opportunities that your prospects face by not adopting AI solutions, like losing business to their competitors. I'll help you create a win-loss contrast so that you can demonstrate to your prospects the businesses that are winning with AI tools and how those who aren't are struggling. And I'll help you present yourself as the solution that bridges the gap. This presentation is built by agency owners for agency owners. It's the real deal packed with insider secrets for closing deals. But remember, delivery is key. So pay close attention as we walk through the slides and let's dive straight in. Before we continue, I want to take this a step further. If this video gets 250 comments, I'll record myself doing a live pitch to a prospect using this very deck. So if you want to see that in action, please fire away with your comments. Oh, and don't forget to smash that like button. If you're enjoying this content, it does help us out a lot. Okay, so with these first couple of slides, slides one to five, I'm not going to go into too much detail about them. But what you need to know is that these are essential details for customizing the deck with your agency's branding. Please have a read of it and don't forget to hide or remove these slides when presenting or sharing them with a prospect. Okay, so slide six, we've got a title here, the next year of business. This is where your story begins. So what you want to do is explain how the rise of AI is changing the business landscape, just like how digital photography disrupted Kodak or how card machines are increasingly replacing the use of cash. Today, AI is the next big revolution. Many businesses are already offering online ordering and delivery apps. Those who don't are falling behind, and that's going to be the same case for not adopting AI. Okay, so in this next slide here, we're displaying a quote from Mark Cuban. We're validating the title that we showed in the previous slide. So here, Mark Cuban says, if you don't know AI, you're going to fail. Period. End of story. So Cuban himself is emphasizing that ignoring AI is no longer an option. Now, Cuban is a recognizable, familiar, and credible face, but of course you can swap him out if you feel that there is a thought leader in your industry that specifically works for uh, or resonates with your prospects. So this quote is leveraging a sales tactic known as FUD, fear, uncertainty, doubt, FUD. This establishes the risk of not doing anything to fix a problem they may be unaware of. So what you've done here is established fear in the client. They're suddenly aware of this problem. And if they don't do anything about it, you've highlighted that the risk is that they fall behind. So really important you get a powerful, credible source like Mark Cuban or someone relevant in your prospects industry to have that validation in there. Now, this next slide here, the local business of tomorrow leverages AI automation. It's really a transitional slide. And what we're highlighting is that successful local businesses are increasingly adopting AI and automation. And we're going to go into claims and proof that validate that. Now, in the next slide, what we're doing is really establishing that win-loss contrast between businesses using AI and not using AI. So in slide nine here, you're walking through an example of a business that doesn't use any automation. And you can see all the pain points here. They wait for customer calls or emails. They treat customers the same. They follow up on leads manually. They get bogged down by repetitive tasks. They can't compete with bigger competitors and they struggle to grow without increasing overhead. They keep needing to add staff in order to grow revenue and everything offsets each other. 
So in this next slide, we're showing our prospect what a winning business that uses AI looks like in the modern era. Okay, so this is the win contrast. And a winning business looks like this. They use things like 24-7 AI chatbots so that they can answer customer queries outside business hours. They customize customer interactions that feel one-on-one, -on -one, and they use more targeted marketing. They use automated lead follow-ups and bookings so that they don't need to be hiring a second or a third part-time admin assistant just to process appointments and different orders. AI gives them more time for strategic thinking and to perfect their craft. They can effectively compete with larger competitors because they've got a lower cost base. And they can scale services effortlessly with digital tools. They don't need to hire people for every little problem in their business because AI is handling so much of the operational stuff now. So what I do is pause here and ask if your prospect has any questions. You want to make this feel like a two-way conversation. You want it to be interactive. But hopefully by the time you get to this slide, um, you've planted the seed in the prospect that this is the dream that every business wants to live, right? They want all these automations. They want, they want tools that give them better customer interactions. And they want a lower cost of doing business. Okay, so on slide 11, we've got a bit of data happening here. So on the left is an example of a business that doesn't use automations. And on the, on the right is an example of a business that does use automations. So this is based on our customer data. And we'll talk about how you can calibrate it for your own presentation. But the idea here is you're showing how much more successful a business is that's using automation. So in this case, way more reviews, um, more leads, more than two times the revenue and more appointments booked than the business that's not using automations. Now for you, um, we'd recommend three options on how you can approach the data on this slide. The strongest option is to make it about your prospect. So if you know your prospect and you have the data for them, replace the metrics you see in the slide with that data. And the way you're going to pitch it to the client is that this is the promise, this is the average of what you attain for this type of client when you implement AI and automations for them. Uh, the second is you can just put results that you've achieved for previous clients. So perhaps you worked with a client before um, in the beginning of your journey, they weren't using AI and automations. You helped implement those AI and automations and now they're over here. So you're showing them the contrast, the before and after contrast. And the last least preferable option, but it's better than nothing, is you can put generic results that any business could expect to see. The key piece of advice we have for this slide is that the more specific you are to their business, the better. The more they care about the results here, the stronger the value of that slide becomes. Okay, so in the next slide, slide 12, uh, we've got a stat here. Really important that you put a good, credible stat. So in this case, we've got businesses can expect 6 to 10% average revenue increase from adopting AI. Okay, so we've pulled out this stat from Statista, and what we want to tell prospects is that this is kind of the average of what you can expect. It's not some explosive figure, but the point is that, um, as you saw in the previous slide, it, it can be dramatically more depending on how well you implement those AI and automations for your prospects. So what you're doing is you're kind of setting the bar at a reasonable level for your prospects. But I, I do want to give you some uh, recommendations here. Personally, for my clients, some of them don't care about revenue. They make tons of money. That's not the problem. Um, the issues that they're having is they want to save more time they want to have a better experience for customers. So feel free to replace the data in this slide with metrics that you feel are more relevant and more personalized for your prospects. And you can include several in here as well. So as an example, you could be saving them five hours per week by automating their review management and social media posts. You could save them $40,000 by implementing a chatbot rather than hiring another admin assistant to handle customer conversations. So Feel free to get really specific about the metrics that you include in this slide and all over this deck. Okay, so we're at slide 13 and by now you should have ticked off three of those elements in our why change framework. We've introduced the prospect to an unconsidered need, we've shown them how businesses are missing out by not leveraging AI, and we've provided a real-life win-loss scenario.
Now what we're doing is positioning ourselves as the expert who can provide them the solutions to transition into the AI world. And what you're doing is showing the strongest example of how you've helped a local business. So in this slide, what we've got is an example of an agency who has implemented an AI chatbot for a foot clinic. This is just an example. This is a real agency that generated 27 leads in three days for this client. For you, what you wanna do is include the strongest result that you have achieved for your clients so far. And if you don't have a result, maybe you have a testimonial, include that. But if you don't have any of those things, what I'd suggest is maybe removing this slide and then adding it back in once you've hopefully closed your first deal, you've um, implemented some really good results for them, and then you can add this type of content to your future deck. So next slide, slide 14, how we work together. So we're now wrapping up and we're telling the prospect that this is our approach to collaborating with you. You're showing them that you're a real professional and not just looking to close the deal hard and fast right then and there. So what's next? It's as easy as one, two, three. You're gonna undergo a needs and discovery exercise. Uh, you're then gonna tell them that you're gonna work on integrating um, all these solutions that, that are personalized for their business. And you're not just gonna sell them and call it a day. You're going to provide ongoing support and make sure that um, what you propose, what you talk about is going to be implemented into their business. And then following from that slide 15, we go to the next steps and you're going to be really specific here about what's going to happen next. So you're going to schedule a discovery call. You're going to have a proposal and roadmap sent out to them. You're going to sign a contract and then you're going to start execution and training. So what we'd suggest is perhaps you could add in clear dates into the slide here. So just edit the slide and add in some clear dates, like the discovery call is gonna happen in two days. You're gonna send a proposal next week. You're looking to sign the contract next week, and then you can start execution and training, for example, by the end of the month, so that the prospect has a clear timeline of when they can start working with you. And that's it for the slide deck. I would thank the prospect for their time, and I'd give them the opportunity, of course, to ask any deeper or follow-up questions. And speaking of questions, there might be a, a few details missing as you're watching this video. So you might be asking yourself, when exactly do I present this pitch deck to clients? So we think this happens after you've done your successful cold outreach. Uh, you've sent a great cold email to the prospect, they've responded, they're interested in hearing you out, they're interested in AI, and they're happy to have a 20 minute call with you. We think that that's the time to present this information to them because you're gonna be asking for more details later. And speaking of cold email outreach, that is what the next episode in this channel is going to be about. So please like this video and subscribe to our channel. You'll be notified when it's published and we have got a treasure trove of value in that episode. Free templates, the anatomy of a great email, when to send, what time, what day, what your cadence should look like. That episode has all of that great content. So make sure you subscribe to our channel to get notified when it's published. The second question you might have is, perhaps missing slides where you can show off your products. Now we actually do have these in the deck. They're in the appendices. So you scroll down in the slide deck and you can find those. Um, we don't recommend including them in the main part of your presentation. So if you look at slides 17 to 23, uh, we have all these different AI solutions here. These are Vendasta screenshots and descriptions, but please replace them with whatever you use. The risk of including this in the main part of your presentation is that you're going to overwhelm your clients with TMI. Too much information about products, they're going to then start wondering, oh my god, how much is all of this going to cost me? So we recommend leaving it in the appendices so that when your clients ask questions like, do you offer chatbots? Do you do reputation management? You can point them to the appendices and show them exactly what you offer. So really important that you keep your ears perked for buying questions from your prospects throughout or after this presentation because buying questions indicate to you how ready or motivated your prospect is to buy. So buying questions can sound like this. When can you get started? What results can we hope to achieve? And how much will this cost? And if they do ask how much will this cost, um, really important that you avoid miscommunication with your clients. Just tell them you're gonna send a proposal, but in order to send a proposal, you do need to do the needs analysis with them so to determine exactly what to put in that proposal. Okay, my friends, that's it. There's your presentation. Again, please go to the description, download it, change it in whatever way you want. And we've also got our suggested speaking notes in there. All through your presentation, please remember the why change framework. 
we want to sell by using the power of storytelling. I'd strongly suggest you have a few practice runs delivering it with a trusted friend or colleague. That's all from me. Please don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel and good luck with your storytelling journey.